There was a time when VPNs or virtual private networks made sense as a way for remote users to access corporate resources. You see, for a long time, application and services that remote users needed were located behind private networks or data centers. A VPN would act as a head end or connectivity point into those resources located in the private network. However, today's organizations look quite different, with more and more SaaS and cloud-based services being accessed directly from the internet as opposed to private networks. A recent report by Netscope found that the average enterprise has around 1,000 SaaS applications. These applications are highly distributed and designed to be accessed directly by the user based on their geolocation. Suddenly, backhauling user traffic into a central location no longer made sense. This extra hop and central termination point introduced higher latency, longer round trip times, and bottlenecks that needed to be addressed, all the while reducing performance and increasing costs due to the equipment requirements that were needed in order to keep up with the demand. This explosion of SaaS and cloud-based services meant that a central network and security point was no longer viable. Even before COVID, modern organizations were already moving to a more and more remote workforce. Users and applications are highly distributed, and for the best user experience, users should be accessing these SaaS applications directly while still maintaining their security policies and inspections from wherever they're connecting from. Secure Access Service Edge, or SASE, aims to solve this problem by providing security and network services in distributed POP locations. You see, SASE vendors have a very large global presence, with POP locations hosted in multiple regions. They would then partner with Tier 1 backbone providers like AT&T or Verizon to have preferred direct access to nearly any point on the internet that they needed to get to. Users would then connect into their nearest POP location, which then routes them out to the SaaS application or private resource depending on where their traffic is going. Security was enforced wherever the user connects in from, whether that be Europe in the morning and California in the evening. In a previous video, I detailed the components and use cases for SASE, which could be categorized into these four core requirements. Secure Web Gateway, which connected and secured remote employees to their SASE cloud or internet services. According to Gartner, it also must include at a minimum URL filtering, malicious code detection and blocking, application identification and control, and almost always will include some type of firewall service. Cloud Access Security Brokers, or CASB. This provides a granular access control and security to SaaS applications like Office 365 and Salesforce. Zero Trust Network Access, or ZTNA. This connects users to private resources in a corporate network or data center. And finally, there was SD-WAN. This was a WAN edge device that connected corporate locations like a branch site or headquarter to a public or private WAN provider and made intelligent steering decisions based off of multiple paths to the destination. For SD-WAN vendors without built-in security like Silverpeak or VeloCloud, the integration meant that it could offload those services to the nearest SASE POP for inspection. SASE itself is not a technology, but rather a package of four different services that were brought together under a single or at most two vendor solution to provide a single place to control access and policies across all four of these services. Gartner predicts that by 2025, over 60% of enterprises will have strategies and a timeline to migrate to SASE. And while this is a booming market, the consolidated vision and integration of security and network into a single or dual vendor solution has left a lot to be desired. As we just reviewed, SASE is made up of four technologies, Secure Web Gateway, CASB, ZTNA, and SD-WAN. And in order to accomplish the SASE vision, security providers like Zscaler and Netscope needed to team up with SD-WAN vendors like VeloCloud or Viptela. In practical terms, the integration between security and network vendors has not only proven to be very difficult, but it's also provided users with few options in choosing the best of breed. If you wanted security services of Zscaler, but the networking services of Viptela, you may not have all the integration that you really needed in order to accomplish the SASE vision. And in a post-COVID world, you may not even have a need for SD-WAN in the first place. This is why a completely new category altogether was formed that defines the security services of SASE without the networking requirements. Security Service Edge, or SSE, was announced by Gartner in 2021 to include only those security components of SASE, that is, Secure Web Gateway, CASB, and ZTNA. 
The difference between SASE and SSE is that SASE does not include the network components of SD-WAN or the optional services like wireless LAN. In other words, networking has been completely removed. Just like SASE, however, SSE also includes the optional security components of DLP, sandboxing, NAC or network access control, and some others. However, it aims at focusing only on the security aspects without any of the networking requirements. This makes SSE an ideal solution for organizations that don't need SD-WAN or want to choose a best-of-breed approach in choosing an SD-WAN and security vendor. Ultimately, SSE is a component of SASE but without SD-WAN, and depending on your organization, they both aim to solve the problem of providing work-from-anywhere security and network access without any of the restrictions or constraints of the central termination point brought on by a VPN. The decision on whether to choose SASE or SSE really comes down to whether or not you have on-premise connectivity requirements. In this post-COVID world where organizations slowly start to move back to the office or have a hybrid approach, SASE provides a way for offices to enforce consistent security anywhere the users are, whether they're working from anywhere or back at the branch office. For organizations that are 100% remote or do not need SD-WAN, SSE may be the right solution for you. This wraps up another video of the CISO perspective, and I hope you found it informative. Please don't forget to hit like down below to give me a boost in the YouTube algorithm. Consider subscribing if you want to stay on top of our latest releases here at the CISO perspective. My name is Andy, and I'll see you on the next video.